Hey everyone, this is a tutorial on how to create Seesaw activities inside Seesaw. First step you need to do while you are in your teacher journal is to go to the green circle to add and then click on assign activity. From here it's going to enter you into your own activity library. Then click on create new activity. Give your activity a title and then you're going to type in the student instructions. A helpful tip is to use Seesaw shortcut icons um, so that you can embed what the actual icon in Seesaw looks like whenever you are giving the actual directions. So if I wanted to include uh, this image of the camera for students to add a picture, uh, I would type in what it says right here under text shortcut. I've actually already typed up my instructions, so I'm going to paste them here. And as you can see, um, right here, I'm going to have the students use a, the microphone, and then I'm also going to have them use a pencil, a pen, or a glow pen. And I'll show you what that looks like um, for students once I'm finished. If you do teach primary, I highly encourage you to add voice instructions. If you teach an upper grade and you teach ELL students, I also suggest that you add your voice for the instructions. If you would like to add multimedia uh, instructions or examples, this is exactly where you would do that. So if you had a video from YouTube that you want your students to watch, you would click on add multimedia example, click on link and then um, copy and paste that link. For this example, I'm not going to include a multimedia instruction or example. What we're going to be focused on is adding a student template, which makes it so much easier for students to answer right um, within the activity that you're assigning. It also makes it a lot easier when you go back to grade. So I usually use the drawing feature of Seesaw to add a student template. From here, it's a blank slate. There is so much you could do on this slide uh, for students to show their work. So I'm gonna show you a couple different ways that I create student templates using these slides. So most oftentimes, I create my original uh, document in Google Slides just because uh, I'm a little bit more familiar with it and I. It's a lot faster for me. So what I do is I actually take a screenshot or a snippet of what I create on my slide. And then what I do is I save that image onto my desktop. And I will then go back into my Seesaw. And I'm going to upload from my desktop whatever document you have. So because I took a snippet or a snapshot, uh, it saves it as the JPEG. So I'm going to choose it and then open. And from here, you can manipulate it. You can make it as large or as small as you need to. Because this is like a worksheet and I want it to stay stationary, I don't want the students to be able to move it. Click on the three dots and then click lock it locks it in place. And so when now the students, uh, when they go to actually work on this activity, they will not be able to move it. They will be able to work right on top of it. So this is one task that I would like them to do. This is their first task. Now let's say I want them to complete a second task within this first activity that I'm creating. So I'm gonna go over here to the right, to the bottom, and it says add page. And it gives me another blank whiteboard app. So the second activity that I want them to complete, I want them to complete a graphic organizer using a Freyer model. So again, I created my um, template on Google Sheets, or Google Slides, I'm sorry, just because it's easier for me. So then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take a snippet of that document or this image that I created on Google Slides. I'm gonna go back to my Seesaw I'm going to add a, uh, click on the camera, click on upload, click on the screenshot that I just took, and from here, make it larger, 
and then I'm going to lock it because I don't want it to move. So now when students go to answer this, um, they can use the text, they can use um, the drawing tools down here to answer this question. All right, the next uh, portion that I'm going to show you is a activity that I'm going to create straight from um, Seesaw. So I'm going to create a graphic organizer, a little table. So I'm going to do a horizontal line right across here. And then I'm going to lock that. I'm going to add another line right down the center. And I am going to rotate it using the arrow. I'll try to make it as straight as possible. OK, so from here I've got my table and I'm going to lock it. I'm going to add a text box. I'll say two, oops, 2D shapes over here. I want the other side to look the same, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. And I'm going to put it on the other side. And this side, I'm going to put 3D shapes. All right, and I'm going to lock those in place. So actually, this line right here, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because I'm going to put images at the bottom that students can use to sort. So that's what this activity is going to be. It's going to be a sort. So I'm going to lock it again. And so for the 2D shapes, I can go directly from the shapes option. Um, and I can click on a variety of shapes that I want to use. And then I can just move them down here. And then for the 3D shapes, um, there aren't any 3D shapes that I see on the seesaw shapes. So I actually want to embed some shapes um, from a, a website or um, any type of uh, visual that you have. So it might even be, even be an image that you took using your camera. So I actually found some free images that found on the website earlier. I'm going to take these images and I'm going to add them right here. So I can make them smaller or larger. Now I am not going to lock these images because this activity is a sort. So the idea is that they are able to manipulate and move these different shapes into the correct category. So I'm happy. I've got three different tasks that my students can complete within this one activity. So I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark. All right. And then I'm going to click save. All right. So this is what it would look like for a student. So as you can see, it says task one, use the microphone to record yourself reading the passage, read the passage again and highlight the short A words, then use the drawing tools to answer each question. Task two, use the text or label to complete each section of the graphic organizer. Task three, click on the move. Uh, then move each image into the correct category. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click assign. I'm going to assign it just to my sample class, but I'm only going to assign it to my sample student just for because this is practice. And if you wanted to schedule it another day, you would click schedule, assign on a specific date and time, and then schedule it for whatever day that you want. I want it to be assigned right now so that I can show you what that looks like for a student. So if I go back to class, and since I added it to a sample student, I'm going to go ahead and click on add response. I'm going to cl click on sample student. If I wanted to view the instructions again, because I don't remember exactly what I needed to do, I could click on view instructions, and it would have all of the instructions for each task. All right, so, and I also put the directions right here. 
So I could use the microphone. I'd click on the microphone and then it would say three, two, one, and I could start reading this short passage. And then it says read the passage again and then use the highlighter to highlight the short A word. So that is exactly what the students could do to show their understanding of what a short word would be. Then use the drawing tools to uh, answer each question. Why was Sam sad? Uh, a, he had lost his cat. Uh, or if you did not like that specific tool, um, then you could erase it and you could use a different tool to answer it. So then if I was finished with this activity, I could go on to the second slide for the second task. I could use the text um, to label uh, each different part of this graphic organizer and I can add the text right inside it. And then once I was finished with this task, I could move on to the third task and I could actually manipulate these shapes to go into the correct category. So I'm going to quickly do that. And then I'm finished, so I'm going to click the check mark. From there, it gets sent to the teacher in order for the teacher to take a look at how the student did and um, give feedback to the student. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me and let me know. I would be happy to help. Take care.